Today is the day we're gonna test out the flagship feature of the Quad Cortex, the Neural Capture. Now I'm definitely not the first guy on YouTube to test this out and I'm sure I will not be the last, but what I am curious about is how good of a capture can you get in a home studio? And by a home studio, I mean very basic equipment, just an SM57, your amp, and the Quad Cortex. Because with the Kemper, as I'm sure many of you have seen, the profiling feature is great, but it's really the guys with studio setups like outboard gear and all this extra stuff that have a leg up in making the profile sound fantastic. Those of us doing it at home, not so much. So let's dive into this. First off, a great capture I would think starts with a great amp tone. So for the first time in about two years, I'm gonna break out my MX-11 VS-15 head and cab. Yes, this is an all tube amp. It's an AC-30 voiced head into a 1x12 cab that features a Celestian Alnico Blue speaker. It looks amazing and sounds even better. So let's get it out. Woo. This time in two years. I don't know. All right, let's see how to do this capture thing. I've got the neural capture mode pulled up here and it's gonna walk us through how to plug everything in. You gotta plug a lot of crap in. All right, I had to do a quick little guitar switch because of the cables I have at my disposal right now, but no biggie. This is actually my favorite sounding guitar, so maybe this is the move. I got the level sounding good. It's time to press the button and see what happens. That was terrifying. It's doing the sanity check because I've definitely lost my mind after that. It's ready. All right. This is the reference. And then the cortex. So I think the Cortex actually sounds really good. It's just like a, like a touch brighter, maybe? I don't know, let's just do... Okay, now let's go back to the reference. It's like, I mean, I, there's a, a slight difference, but it's pretty close. I'm curious, you know, when I'll listen back and you listening right now, how that recorded audio sounds like. How different is it really? Cortex. Ah. <laughs> Reference. Ah, oh, that is insane. Okay, reference. Cortex. I give up. I think this is ridiculous. This technology is incredible, and I think the fact that it sounds this good just with the bedroom setup is nuts. So the neural capture is clearly impressive. Does it sound exactly like my amp? I mean, 
to my ear, the characteristic of my amp is definitely there and it's so dang close that I can't imagine people hearing it in context would ever know the difference. A few years ago, I actually tried to profile my amp into a Kemper and it didn't come out nearly as good as this one did. It's a similar process, a bunch of spaceship noises, kabang kaboom, and then all of a sudden you have your amp. Most of my amp's characteristic was there, but overall I'd say it sounded a little bit sterile. This neural capture definitely seems to be a bit more light like and it better captures the feel of my amp like when I was switching between the capture and the actual amp I, it was hard to tell a difference honestly and for the most part I'd say the small tonal differences between my amp and the actual capture had more to do with my playing dynamic than the actual sound of the capture but the question I think we all want to know is how does it stack up to answer that I've recorded a few demos for us to test out so we have the real MX-11 amp, then the neural capture of the MX-11, then I also made an AC-30 style amp using stock quad cortex stuff to get us somewhere in the ballpark. And then as a wild card, cause a lot of people seem to hate on the ACS-1, but I, I've never understood it, I'm throwing in their version of an AC-30 in the mix as well. And before anyone gets too hyped up about potential volume differences, I'm gonna let you know right now, I've gone through with the Luffs meter to get them as close as possible. So I have thoughts, and I'm sure you do too, so feel free to share them in the comments down below. I can confirm that my experience playing on all four was incredibly similar. The feel is there, the dynamics is there. I don't think you could go wrong with any of these, to be honest. But if I had to rank them, I would say number one is the real amp, number two is the capture of the real amp, then number three, probably the Quad Cortex AC30, but but it's tight. And then the ACS1, but like I said, those two I, I could interchange. The slight tonal differences kind of remind me of ice cream flavors. Like you can get seven different mint chips and they all probably taste slightly different, but you know it's a mint chip ice cream. And real quick, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to like it, I would so appreciate it. But I gotta tell you, I am a bit curious how much my own biases as well as yours are influencing how we hear the sound. So to counteract that, we have to do a blind test. First up, clean tone. I would say A is, A was the neural capture. I think B was the quad cortex. C was the real amp. And I think D was the ACS one. So the first one A yeah. was the third. This one. Okay, so that was the quad cortex, so I was wrong. B was the second. Oh, that was the neural capture. Wow, I didn't like that one. That's not good. Okay, <laughs> what was the third one? The first. So I was right on that, that's the real amp. I That one definitely sounded the best by far. Okay, so then the last one, was that the ACS one? Mm, 
So I was right on that one. So how did y'all do this round? I clearly failed outside of being able to pick out the real tube amp. In this particular demo, I felt like the real amp was more than a step above the rest. It had that perfect level of clarity and articulation. And then the remaining three were just kind of a wash for me. But I will say the neural capture, ironically, was my least favorite of the group this time. It felt maybe a little bit muddy and not as clear as the other two. Second up, we have the Les Paul featuring the JHS Moonshine. It's a nice, warm, rich, drivey tone. This is actually my go-to second stage drive sound on my pedal board. And sure, I could have moved the knobs for each different unit to make them sound exactly the same, but I didn't think that was actually the point. What I wanted to emphasize is that it's the exact same pedal, same guitar, same settings, but once it hits the neural capture, the amp, whatever it is, it all reacts slightly differently. So here we go. Definitely rank them in order one through four and see if you can get Yes, what's what? I think A is the ACS1. No, I changed that. I think A is the Neural Capture. I think B was the Quad Cortex. I think C was the Real Amp. And I think D was whatever else is left, the ACS1. Uh, option A was the second. I was right, Neural Capture. Option B was the third clip. Quad Cortex, also right. Option three was the fourth. Oh, wow. So I got the amp pedal mixed up with the Real Amp. Interesting. I thought D actually was maybe my least favorite, but that was the real amp. So what does that tell you? I don't know about you, but I assume that the differences this time once you introduce a drive pedal would be much greater, but I actually thought the differences were much smaller. I'm glad I improved on my score from last time, but I have to admit that I'm a little shocked that I mistook my real amp and the ACS-1. The ACS-1 tone felt the most round and the most balanced to me, so in my head I was like, well that has to be the real amp. Wrong. Finally, I wanted to see how all these amps react to one of my go-to ambient sounds. Big reverb, big delay, light compression, same settings across the board. Here we go. So the first one was the real amp, the second one is the quad cortex, the third one is the neural capture, and then the last one was the ACS one. A was the fourth clip. Oh wow, once again, the ACS one has confused me. And then the option B was the third clip. I was right on that, the quad cortex, okay. Option C was the second clip. I was right on that, the neural capture. And then option D was the first. Let's just get out of the way. There were definitely no losers this round. All four options sounded great, and that made distinguishing them that much harder. And once again, I mistook the ACS-1 for the real amp. It's so interesting to me. Maybe this particular test gives a little bit of efficacy to that notion that the more effects you add to the signal, the more they're all gonna start sounding the same. 
Now I'm sure a lot of you watching are gonna be like, oh, I could tell the difference. This kid doesn't know what he's talking about. Look, that's fine. To me, all four sounded really solid. And I like sound design. And I would be perfectly happy if someone put any four of these in front of me. This whole experiment was kind of crazy to me. Like, I've watched a lot of people do this sort of thing on YouTube, but it's another thing to do it for yourself. And I have to admit, it's wild that the quad cortex can essentially capture a lot of the character of your amplifier. And not even that, but just using the stock sounds or even a $400 amp pedal can get you to a sound that is totally competitive. Fooled me, I'm sure it fooled a few of you. It's a cool time for guitar technology. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet already. I have tons of videos on this channel and more videos on the way. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will catch you next time.